My name is Benny O'Looney. I'm a local architect working just down the road in Peckham. This is one of the closest bridges to where we work. And um, I just love to spend the evening coming down here and sketching. Bridges are absolutely fantastic to sketch. They combine the space, the air of a panoramic drawing with strong sculptural forms here in the foreground. And I think that's something that really makes a sketch interesting to have background townscape interest, but then something powerful in the foreground. And with these mighty steel arches, we can see great shading, as they say, chiaroscuro. So really giving you something to get stuck into as a draftsman, to give tone that generates the three-dimensionality that I'm really searching for in making a townscape drawing. When I come to do my evening and afternoon sketches here along the river, I usually do little study drawings to kind of size up the views, to look at the different compositions, and we'll so do these little what we call thumbnail sketches. And then once I've decided on a view and a kind of composition that I'm happy with, then I'll begin to lay it out in pencil. So you can see I've got the beginnings of a pencil sketch here. I typically draw quite loosely to begin with, to try to get the general form, and the scale, and the proportion of the different elements of this wonderful townscape view here. Once I've got an initial study down on paper, then I'll try to sharpen it up by measuring the view. And so here, using my pencil with my arm stretched out full length, I'll get one, two, two and a half so we've got one pencil two pencil i'll make a little mark here and a half there and so i'll make some little notations on my drawing here in pencil if i choose i can rub it out at the end and i can see that one pencil is seven centimeters Another important thing to do in the early part of a sketch is establish the horizon line. And so here, taking a look at just almost exactly my eye level in the view here, and then I'll quite boldly sketch out the horizon line. And this is absolutely essential in constructing a townscape sketch because things below the horizon line, you can see it's high tide today and the water's well up the cut waters, move ups like this, and then things above the horizon line are going to be going downwards. And so this is a really critical threshold in making a townscape drawing, is identifying early on where the horizon line is. One thing that really helps making a townscape drawing is a triangle something like this, that you can not only make careful, neat little measurements between the different sectors of the drawing, but it also is really good for picking up the strong horizontal and vertical lines that typically characterize buildings, bridges, the things that we find sketching in the city center. Now, once I've laid out initial kind of pencil study of, of what I'm doing here. I suppose I better get in some of these mighty towers in the city of London that are ever-changing skyline of the capital here. So you can see in the early part of a drawing I'm using quite a free and fluid line putting things together in a fairly loose way and then coming in at a later stage and defining the elements perhaps with a hard line where I need to. One of the next things I like to do in putting a townscape drawing together is putting some tone in. And one wonderfully easy, low-cost way to introduce tone is with a pot of fountain pen ink and a little bit of water. You can see I've got my milk bottle tops here, darker tone, bit of water. And here I start to lay in some of the tone that really is the reason I came to study this bridge because of this wonderful shadow of light and dark and so that can be 
dropped in with a little bit of what we call ink wash here. As the ink wash begins to dry, I sometimes go back into my pen, this time with a fountain pen, and I can pick up some of the characteristic details that really make this such a recognizable and beautiful bridge here in London. One of the reasons that I've come to sketch the Southwark Bridge is by one of my favorite late Victorian architects, Sir Ernest George. He had an incredible career, getting its start in the 1860s. By the 1870s and 80s, he's one of the go-to architects in London, creating fanciful, spectacular townscape in Kensington and Chelsea. For example, in Harrington and Collingham Gardens, just a few minutes walk to the west of Gloucester Road Station, on the way to Earl's Court, you can find these incredible squares, visions of Renaissance, Flemish and Dutch architecture, brilliantly executed in brick and fantastic terracotta. He was one of the masters of terracotta architecture here in the capital. Sketching can be such a powerful way to document the city and it's a great chance to get to know the architecture so much better. And it wasn't till quite some time of drawing, and thinking about the shape and the detailing of this bridge that I really began to see how it was a stunning example of the Beaux-Arts building up of the city in the early 20th century. So once again, the horizon line, absolutely critical as the sort of starting point for setting out the powerful perspective as this bridge comes up towards us on the south side with its tall piers, beautifully terminated with fabulous granite detail. It's as crisp and as well set out as it was the day it was finished a hundred years ago. So you see now that I've drawn ink wash into the drawing, I can bring the brush to the ink and then slightly blend it and soften the ink work. By the 1920s, when this bridge was designed and constructed, civil engineers had really become very confident in steel bridge building. In the 1880s, the mighty Tower Bridge was constructed, one of the earlier steel bridges here in the capital. The bridge before that, the Westminster Bridge, is actually made out of wrought iron as in the 1860s when the Westminster Bridge was built, steel was not commercially available for these sorts of projects. By 1920, Ernest George, working with the engineer Mott, built this fantastic, strong steel spans here. So I'm using the pen to pick up the repetitive steel arches neatly tied together with stiffening braces. Rising behind the bridge, we can see London's tallest new skyscraper, 22 Bishop's Gate, sailing off the top of my page, so tall, second tallest building in Europe. But I think that's kind of okay. When making a composition like this, you want it to be quite punchy. So chopping things off and having Having things expand outside of the page often really helps give drama and visual interest to your sketch. Once again, the triangle really helps get the big perspective movement in here. I can see the shadow underneath the arches there. One of the things I particularly like to do in my townscape sketches is go in across two pages. So here, to kind of have a little bit more fun, I'm now working over onto the other opposite page here, getting Vintner's Court, built by the company of wine merchants, and then KPF's Thames Court, Queen's Hythe, which is now being developed just to the west. So it's ever-changing scene down here on the Thames. Really compelling. One of the key elements that you really need to get right in a sketching project like this is the outer profile where your 
subject meets the sky. So that's one line you really want to try to get as crisp and accurate as possible, as that's what the eye often goes to. One of the things I often like to do sketching is to kind of define the composition by gently drawing a kind of box around it. So if you see, I put my thumb to the edge of the sketchbook, I can draw a wonderfully straight line that way. And so I'm now defining the bottom of my composition here. And so what I can do is I can then bring some of the tone down to meet that and begin to really see how the composition frames up. One of the things that's really exciting about Sir Ernest George, the architect of the Southwark Bridge, was he was celebrated as a brilliant draftsman and watercolorist. And you can see how that really feeds into his architecture, especially in these picturesque houses and squares in Kensington. And here at the Southwark Bridge, we can see how there's both strong sculptural forms vertical terminations to the piers here, and brilliantly chosen classical detailing, which adds richness and rhythm and animation to the architecture. One classic technique that we use in townscape sketching is drawing by defining the negative space. So I can see in these vertical struts here, there's a shadow behind, and so Instead of drawing the strut, I'm just drawing the shadow and then letting the white space of the page draw the element for me. This can be really helpful in drawing engineering structures like this bridge here, windows and houses and other buildings. It's what we call drawing with the negative space. To give a little bit of texture to the picture, I sometimes tap the brush, get some interesting ink effects that way. Sketching is this incredibly accessible, easy and fun thing to do. Do you see the materials are simple? A pencil, a pen, a triangle, some paper and a pot of ink. All you know, practically pennies. And the wonderful Riverside Promenade on the north and here on the south side provides limitless possibilities for townscape sketching and, and enjoying the wonderful, sensuous forms of London's bridges.